Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial video made by, uh, quite obviously me. <laughs> uh, today we're gonna be focusing on what I would say is one of the most important parts of, uh, understanding CV2, and that's integers and other types of variables. So we're gonna get into that today and just learn all the basics about it. So, here we have all of our variables, the float variable, the bool variable, and the int variable. Of course, there is many, many, many other variables. You can find them by going to your maker pen, clicking circuits v2, and going down to variables. Here's all the variables. We are gonna be only focusing on these three plus the string variable at the end, if I have time. So, starting from the left, we will just go through each one, and I will tell you guys how to use them. So, here is the float variable. This variable is basically just used to get the distance of pistons and the rotation of um, rotators. So if I got get out of piston here, you'll see it wants a float for the speed and the max distance. It also outputs a float. So floats are commonly used when you are putting a number in the variable that is a decimal. So, for example, 0.1 or something like 45.3. Anything with a decimal point can go in here. Now you can also use whole numbers too. So, a float variable is very similar to the int variable, which we'll get into later. The next variable we have is a bool variable. The bool variable is basically just gonna do true or false. So if you've ever done a school test and there was a true or false question, that would be like that. So if I get a button here, here is a bool output. That's gonna output if toggle button is pressed down. If it is pressed down, that is gonna be true. Otherwise, it's gonna be false. And you can just put this into a variable and it will output as true or false. You can also connect it with a not. And what a not does is it outputs the opposite of what is being input into it. So here is outputting a false and it will get turned into true. The last variable we have here is an int variable. Like I said, very similar to the float variable. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to put whole numbers inside of it. So something like 23 or 100 or something like 1. But you cannot put numbers with decimals inside of it. See, I put a 1.4. It's not going in there. Now, int variables are mainly used to save uh, numbers like your score and other stuff like that. So we have all of our variables here, but we want to know how to use them. So I'm going to go through some basic ways to use each and every one of them so you can get a feel of what they're like. So here we are going to get a piston. And we are going to set, we're just going to remove this add, whoops, we are going to remove the add, and we are going to wire this to change the max distance of the piston. Now, if you see, if I clone the int variable over here, like I said, they're both pretty similar. If I clone this one, I'm going to bring it over here. And I try to put int variable into it, it's not gonna work. It needs a float. So we have our float input in here. And right now, if we configure it, we can see what is inside the value of the variable. As you can see, right now the value is zero. I want the max distance of the piston to be three. So just like that, we have changed inside of the variable. 
So next up, we have the bool variable, and this is again used to check if something is true or false. So if we configure it, you can see that the value can be set to false or true. I'll put it as true. And as you can see, even though it says false over here, it will output as true because I put true inside of it. So say I want to put something that checks if the toggle button is pressed, true or false. So we're going to wire that so each time it's pressed down or released, it's going to check if it's pressed down or released. Right now it's not pressed down and it still shows us true because inside of here we have the value set to true. But let's just set that to false. So now we have it at false. And if we put the button down, you can see right now it's false. If we click it, it will change the true because the button is pressed down. So here is probably my favorite variable. It's the one I use the most. And for this example, we're just going to make a basic counter. Make it so when the button is pressed, it is going to grab the right side. So that's what number is inside of the variable. And it is going to add to that by let's make it one and then it's going to put that back inside the variable so basically this is adding one every time we click as you can see right now it's zero we click now it's one i can click on and on forever okay so how do I save numbers without going inside of the variable? Now, we kind of talked about this a little bit with the integer variable, but let's go more into depth. So, I have my button here. I'm going to get rid of this. And I want to set the float variable to every time the button is pressed, I want it to be set to 1. Now, this will be useful because now you don't have to configure it and go in there every time and change the value to 1. I'll put it back to 3. As you're going to see, right now it's 3. But when I press the button, it'll change to 1 because I wanted the flow to be 1. Now, this top execute right here, it is going to change the variable to whatever is inside of here. So. Here we have the bool variable. Same thing. When I press the toggle button, it's going to make the bool variable true or false depending on if it's clicked down or not. So as you can see, it's false right now because it's not clicked down. Now it's true. This only works because every single time it is pressed or released it is going to check if the bool variable is true or false. Now, this last one, we already kind of talked about it, but whenever the button is pressed, it is going to add 1 to the variable. So it's going to take whatever is inside of the variable, it's going to add it by 1, and then it's going to put it back inside the variable. So, that is the basic understanding for the bool, the integer, and the float variables, but there is one more type of variable that I told you guys about, and that's the string variable. So let's get right into that. So, here's the last variable. It's a string variable. As you can see, it is purple. Purple means string or text. So what a string basically is, is I can put any letters in here, any numbers, but it will show up as a text. So as you can see, it does not show up like that because I have not executed it yet. So we need to execute to set it so that when the button is pressed, it's going to set whatever inside of here and it's going to put it inside of the string variable. As you can see, it's blank right now, but as soon as I press a button, it's going to go to my text. So, there's your basic understanding of how variables work. Thank you for watching my tutorial, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!